Welcome all to Insights IS, a new session. This session we are calling is uh, Political Science 360 degree. So many students have doubts regarding which option subjects they have to opt for and many people have doubts regarding Political Science. So many people are curious to know that why one can opt Political Science, what is there in Political Science and uh, people from which background can opt for Political Science. All your doubts will be cleared in this particular session. I am Nikhil K. Gowda, the Political Science and International Relations Faculty at Insights IS. So today we will be going through a basic details. I will give a brief introduction about myself in that regard and then I will go into the syllabus part. Then we will look into part of who can opt for Political Science and the Political Science course details at Insights IS. So friends, let us start with the session. We will start with a brief introduction about uh, me. So as you know, uh, my name is Nikhil Kegowda and I uh, have been the Political Science and International Relations Faculty at Insights IS from past three years. I have done my Masters in Public Policy from National Law School and I have um, uh, pursued my civil service career in that regard. I have given two interviews and have written uh, four mains uh, in that regard. And I have been guiding students with respect to the Political Science option from last four to five years. And my area of expertise has been um, International Relations, uh, Indian Polity as well as modern history. And I have been also written various articles which have been published in uh, the Organizer magazine as well as Lokniti in that regard. So this is a brief introduction about myself. Now coming to the next point, uh, a brief idea about the option subject. Now political science or any option subject comprises of two papers and each paper carries uh, 250 marks. So optional has a weightage of 500 marks. So optional plays a very key role in ensuring that you get a good rank in the exam. Now coming to political science in that regard, as we see that paper 1 has two parts in that. Part A is Western and Indian political thought, part B is Indian government and politics. In paper 2 again we can divide into two parts, part A is comparative politics and international relations and part B is India and the world. Now, in the Western and Indian political thought, what one can expect is that you will be going to read about certain important ideas given by political scholars. So here we will be starting with your Greek political scholars that is Plato and Aristotle. Then we will be going to Machiavelli, then your social contract theorist Locke, Hobbes, then you have J.S. Mill, then we will be reading about Marx, uh, Gramsci and Hannah Arendt. This is regarding the Western political thought. And here many students do have fear that should we read everything about Plato and Aristotle? Not necessary. We will mainly focusing on the important political ideas given by the scholars. We are limiting only to their political ideas. We are not going into all the ideas given by, uh, you know, the Greek or the Western political thinkers. Coming to the Indian political thought. Here we will be starting or studying out ideas of Manu, Kautilyas, Arthashastra, then uh, M. N. Roy, Sir Syed Hamad Khan, Gandhi, Ambedkar, Arbindo Ghosh. So these are the major Indian thinkers you will be studying about. Again similar, the same thing applies here. We are only limiting to the important political ideas given by them. Then we have uh, introduction to political theory which mainly comprises of important uh, you know theories or important uh, themes what we can say. So here we will be studying about uh, you know what is democracy, what are the different forms of democracy, why is democracy, whether democracy is a good form of government or is it not an ideal form of government? Again, we'll be linking thinkers here in that regard. Then what is power? What are the different kinds of power? What is equality? What is liberty? Then what is uh, political theory? Political theory comprises of two parts called as political science and political philosophy. So mainly a theoretical part, part A, and it is a very interesting concept and various thinkers uh, are going to be in this part. And these thinkers are also very easy to understand provided you go with a proper uh, you know approach and part b is something which is similar to the uh, uh, gs student also if you have read lakshmi kant or you have read indian polity so you can see 80 percent of it it repeats here here we will be starting with a bit of or a brief of uh, modern history in that regard uh, the freedom struggle we will be reading about important events such as non-cooperation movement civil disobedience movement quit india movement and we will be also studying about uh, the contribution of the moderates uh, you know extremists in that regard the peasant struggle, the tribal revolt. So these are the areas we will be looking into and here it is mainly from an analytical point of view. Nobody needs to re remember very important facts in that regard. 
it's a it's a easy part it's a it's a thing which you would have already read in gs in that regard and rest is same thing what is there in your uh, uh, part b of uh, uh, political science is similar to what is there in your gs2 syllabus that is the indian constitution and indian politics part here you'll be reading about the constitution you'll be reading about preamble fundamental rights directive principle of state policy statutory bodies constitutional bodies then we'll be reading about pressure groups the party system in india and you'll be briefly reading also reading about the environmental movements in india the uh, chipko movement in that regard and uh, you'll be also reading about various human rights movement so this is a huge overlap with your gs2 paper and it is very easy to read and it is a very interesting subject to read in that regard now coming to paper 2 the paper 2 mainly comprises of international relations uh, this part but in part a it is going to be mainly theoretical in theory you are going to read one part called as comparative politics we are going to compare the constitutions of different countries or the political system of developed countries with the developing countries for example how do pressure groups work in india and how do pressure groups work in western countries how do environmental movements work in india and how do environmental movements operate in the western countries then we'll be going into the important aspect of your theory part that is you know uh, realism liberalism feminism in international uh, uh, relations part and then what is national interest what is balance of power what is deterrence in that regard regional organization Uh, multilateral institutions but please again remember you are not reading all the multilateral institution only the most important ones and ones which have been in use for example who has been in use imf has been in use world bank has been in use united nations has been in use so these are the parts we'll be trying to cover in that regard and one of the myth many students have that you know it is too bulky in nature we have to read all the international organization a student need not be worried about it it is mainly the important ones and that to those institutions which are in use in this index and the other part is globalization its impact on developed countries and developing countries in that regard this is one part also of your part a political science so part a is mainly uh, comprises of global politics part b is mainly focusing on indian foreign policy here in this part you will be studying about india's relations with its neighboring countries india's relation with global powers and indian uh, relations with the diaspora in that regard and it is mainly about studying about the making of indian foreign policy what are the institutions which play an important role in making our foreign policy and uh, the important policies which india has brought about for improving the relation with its neighbors and uh, the global powers for example neighborhood first policy in that regard which india has recently brought about these are the kind of things we'll be looking into uh, studying in part b but again few doubts what students get here is that should we read about all the countries in that regard not necessary uh the only the most important ones like us uh, russia israel japan china and uh, for africa and all we don't need to study each african country we have to approach from a region wise india and africa relations as a whole india central asia relations as a whole so friends uh, this is mainly what is there in the political science syllabus comprising of two papers now uh, the other important doubt uh, which many students do get is that who can opt for political science there is a you know there is a myth among these students that uh, uh, i do not have an humanities background i come from an engineering background i come from a medical background i come from a commerce background for these people cannot opt for a humanities subject you know this is one of the myths which is there there are many people who are from engineering background from medical background who have taken political science and they have in fact performed better than those people who are from political science background so this is an optional subject which can be chosen by any person who is interested in indian polity part who is interested in understanding the global politics or the international relations in that regard and it it is a perfect subject that one who is looking for is there a huge overlap with general studies because that is the next thing what i am going to speak about why political science why one should opt for political science or why one should take political science the first important point is that it is a very interesting subject to read you don't get bored reading this subject second one the concepts are pretty easy to grasp it is not complicated in that regard and third one it is very easy to connect with you know what is happening in and around for example in optional subject the scores are going to increase provided you are able to write a unique dimension or you are able to bring your side of the dimension for that you need to have a connection with the current examples so political science is a type of subject no matter which notes you read you can easily connect to current events because various current events are linked to political science for example let us take the recent issue of the farm bill in that regard or the recent issue of hindu hindi imposition issue which is going on or the neat issue which is going on 
all can be linked to the various theories or various concepts in political science. So that is why this is one option subject where the students can come out with a unique answer of his own which is going to increase his score. Second one, the optional subject has been performing well in recent times if you especially uh, since 2015, uh, you know many people from political science optional uh, subject are getting ranks and this year also many people from political uh, science optional subject have got an interview call. So the results will be announced shortly, we will get to know in this regard. And the biggest advantage of political science what I want to stress here is that it's huge overlap with general studies. So some people say that you know political science option may be a bit vast in that regard or some people say that it is too dynamic in nature. Again it's all myths because if you actually see there is a huge overlap between your general studies syllabus and political science syllabus means even if you are not taking political science you have to read uh, the parts of political science in your general studies. For example let us take essay and ethics. If you look into last year's uh, UPSC question paper uh, especially the essay question paper there were two, three essays which were quotes of directly quoted, quoted by the political science thinkers. You know, there was a quote from Marx, there was a quote of um, Hegel in that regard. So, it will help you to build uh, or write very good essays in that regard. Second one in ethics, you will be reading about various political science uh, philosophers, you will be reading about Plato, you will be reading about um, uh, Kautilya, Gandhi, etc., who can link in your ethics paper. They will help to a great extent in uh, governing your ethics syllabus also the quotations what you read here also can be used in your ethics paper. Then in your GS paper 1 here again you will be reading about uh, you know cold war you will be reading about colonialism, neo-colonialism, you will be reading about various uh, concepts of modern history in that regard and also you will be reading about Indian society part we are reading about globalization and its impact on Indian society. Now all these parts again overlap in your PSIR paper and PSIR again to a certain extent will uh, you know it will cut short your time in that regard. So what you read there can be used also for your optional subject and what you read for your optional subject can be also used in GS. And GS paper 2 is one paper where the political science has its huge impact. So almost 70% of GS paper 2 overlaps with your political science paper. That is the making of the Indian constitution, DPSP, fundamental rights, constitutional bodies, statutory bodies and you have IR part, you know at least 4 to 5 questions come from IR every year in GS paper 2 and these questions can be easily answered with those people especially from the political science background. And even in GST, you can have security part um, and political economy part, there is a whole lot. So we can say 55 or to 50 percent of your GS syllabus, it overlaps uh, with political science syllabus. That is why it is one of the popular options and that is why many people opt for political science. But said so, the way you write your answers in political science and way you write your answers in general studies, there is a slight difference into it. That I will be explaining to you in detail when I conduct the uh, orientation session which I have organized. I will mention about the orientation session at the end of this video. Now moving forward in that regard. Now the success ratio plays a key role to what extent uh, the uh, subject is uh, successful. See now. Uh, if you see political science success ratio, it is on the rise, it is on the increase from 2014 onwards. As of 2017 data, it is 9.4 percent in that regard. And you have to also look for the number of candidates who have been recommended from political science, it is always on the increase. So we cannot always just go by percentage wise, we also have to look the number of candidates who have qualified. So for that the political science is an in increasing ratio, so more number of people from political science are qualifying. They are not just qualifying, they have been also able to get the top ranks. So here is a list of names and people who have topped the exam with political science starting from Tina Dabi who secured first rank in 2015 with PSIR option in that regard. So you can see there are many people, the list goes on, there are many people who have been able to uh, come within top 100 because of their performance in the optional subject. But provided that you need to have the interest in the option also, you cannot blindly choose an optional subject just because it is scoring. It is more important that V score or I score, it is not just important others are scoring, that you have to keep in your mind. Now coming uh, to you know what kind of questions one can expect from political science. I have bought a few sample questions from four parts or two papers of the political science. Uh, uh, how, how is liberty a precondition for uh, inequality? Explain the relation between equality and liberty. This is a kind of question which you can expect in a part A paper. 
Part B paper, you can see it's straightforward, uh, direct from Indian constitution, but what are the provisions for the constitutional protection of freedom of religion and how far they have succeeded uh, in protecting secularism in India. So, you can see you can uh, relate to your uh, Indian polity part here. And uh, a part A paper to feminist approach to international politics is biased, they are asking you to comment on it. Uh, again, you will come to know once you read what is feminism and what is their view on international politics. And uh, uh, part B question, in history of Indian foreign policy, seldom have relations between two nations blossomed as fast as them in the case of India and Israel discuss. So, as I said, they are not going to ask you, you know, very old relations, they are going to ask the key important one. For example, India-Israel question can also repeat in 2022 because it has been 30 years the diplomatic relations between India and Israel has been established. That was back in 1992. So, these are the kind of questions one can expect in political science. Now, coming to political science uh, uh, course at Insights IS, um, so the uh, uh, the main target of this course is to make students, uh, you know, score more than 300, reaching 350 is a possibility, but it requires kind of hard work and smart work and a lot of self-effort from the student also. Now, our, our main aim of the goal here is to teach political science not from a PhD point of view, it is mainly to teach it from a uh, competitive exam point of view or to enable a student to address the demands demanded by the UPSC. Second one is that uh, they will be, uh, the classroom will be both online as well as offline. Uh, for students who are staying outside Bangalore can take online classes. We have a very good online platform where recorded videos will be available in that regard. And I will be also looking into the answer writing. A students, uh, you know, will come and show the answers to me or for online students what they send through telegram. But again, it mainly works on the interest of the students. So, the more answers you show, the more happy I will be to evaluate your answers and try to give you a feedback. And the main agenda of the course is also to make you realize what are the important sources to read. We will be providing class notes in that regard. And also here one important point you need to remember is that we are also providing a monthly magazine called as News to Notes. It is a monthly political science current affairs magazine which has been released uh, by Insights IS from January 2022. It is available on our website. Uh, you can go and download it there in that regard. And that will give you many important points it, uh, for students to add important content in the exam. And the main, uh, the main idea of this course is not to make you a rote learning parrot, but give you the necessary skills to think and link and write very good answers in the exam. That is the main agenda of my program at Insights IS through political science. Now, uh, many students have doubts, can we trust uh, the political science classes at Insights IS? For this, uh, to be transparent, we can go through the Quora, various students have given their uh, reviews on the classes in that regard and most of the reviews have been positive in that regard. And also, we have many test series students who have qualified. One example is Neta Meti who got All India Rank 326 in 2020. So, her review is also there. Uh, so, the classes we have been able to, you know, satisfy the students demand in that regard and we will work forward again to improve our classes and, you know, to provide the best platform for political science. So, these are the few reviews about the political science classes. And now coming to the course, uh, the course is starting from June 25th, 2022, the first batch uh, of political science for this particular year and it is going to be a four months course in that regard and it will, my classes will be from Monday to Friday for a duration of two and a half hours uh, each particular day. The class notes will be provided once the class is completed. After each class, the respective notes will be uploaded in the portal that you can download in that regard. And we will be also, as I told, we will be providing a monthly magazine called as News to Notes that is free for everybody. You can download and try to, uh, you know, enhance your current affairs information regarding political science. And uh, for uh, the IR part, I will also be teaching in the class how to choose articles, which websites to refer, which sources to refer in that regard. So, this is regarding the classroom program at Insights IS. The detailed orientation session, the offline orientation session that is, it is going to be held on June 2nd at 4 p.m. In uh, The venue will be Insights OGP2 that is above Purvika stores. So, all of you are welcome to attend that particular session. There I will be going into the details of political science. I will be taking up the questions from your side. What are the doubts you have? I will be clearing your doubts. And for those students who are staying outside Bangalore, you can also join us for this session by joining the Zoom webinar link uh, which you can see on the board. You can register yourself on this link and you can attend the session online. Friends, coming to the course, the course will be starting on June 25th. The admissions will be open from June 1st. The fees is going to be 32,500 rupees inclusive of GST. 
and we have also provided a 10% early bird offer and old subscriber offer which will be valid until June 20th. So with this, the session is coming to an end. I hope to see you in large numbers on June 2nd at 4 p.m. in OGP2. Please come there, clarify any kind of doubts what you have. Till then, take care and stay safe. Thank you.